Welcome to Big Blend Radio's first Friday Toast to the Arts and Park show with the National Parks Arts Foundation, who are known for their amazing artist residencies in parks across the country. Hey, everybody. Today, we are going to Hawaii to chat with artist Diana Miller. She has been accepted as the latest artist in residence at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park through the National Parks Arts Foundation. And you know how we love their artist residencies. They're incredibly unique. And we're very excited to chat with her because not only do we love her artwork, Diana's artwork is beautiful. Uh, She has an affinity for the natural world. Uh, But she also comes from a background of being in the military. And she also worked as a seasonal ranger in uh, the National Park Service at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. So welcome, Diana. How are you? I'm so glad to be here. And thank you so much for conducting this interview. Uh, This is a really exciting time and an opportunity for me that I'm still in shock that I uh, was awarded this uh, residency. You know, I think it's exciting because, you know, well, actually, I wanted to ask why you even said, OK, I want to go for it, because um, you worked there, you live in Hawaii. And um, for, for you know, most people are going to go, oh, I can go to the park anytime. What was your thing of why you wanted to go? To, what was your inspiration to be to, you know, go for it with this residency? Well, like you mentioned uh, in the introduction, I have been working at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park since 2008 on and off. And I've always had a degree in art, but I didn't really get a focus. I didn't, nothing really caught my heart. And I learned a lot of things when I was working at Hawaii Volcanoes um, National Park. I learned about the native environment, the eruption activity, and it just, I guess, reset my whole attitude about art. And now I've gotten to the point where I'm focused that all I will paint is native species and natural environments. I mean, honestly, Mm. you mentioned the Air Force, the the military mm-hmm. gave me a lot of experience and I painted in the military, mostly airplanes, imagine that. Oh, wow. Uh, but this is very close to my heart. The so you went from airplanes to painting birds. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I I love this. So you were a pilot. Pardon me? Were well, you were a pilot, right? In, in the airplane. Uh, actually, I was a navigator. Oh, uh, wow. I was one of the few, uh, I started as a Russian linguist and then I uh, got to officer training school and I didn't even want to be a pilot. I didn't know how to drive a car when I was in the Air Force. And uh, so I was a navigator, which is kind of artistic because I would interpret radar and do celestial navigations. And it was a very fun, fun job for me. Uh, but then they got rid of navs and then I got out yeah. of the Air Force. Well, and you ended, you landed, I should say, in Hawaii. And so for you being out in the natural world, I know that you also live in, in a little forest area. What is, you know, the natural world when you go out into a park and I know the National Park Service does everything it can in the ultimate of protection of land. When we look at the different parks across the country in different types, I think the National Park Service works really hard to preserve and protect. So part of what I think is the beauty of art, and I know you and I've chatted about this before, is, you know, art takes the park to other people that may not get to the park. And in, in a way with that, um, is a little bit of conservation that goes along with that, right? Oh, sure, without a doubt. Um, and, you know, my residency is going to involve some uh, painting demonstrations. And so with my background as an interpretation education ranger, I will be able to actually not just talk visually what we're um, painting or what it, what it is, a little of the history about, you know, birds being, you know, in danger with all the challenges of the world we live in now. And... Uh, at, I hate to admit this, but when I first moved to Hawaii, I didn't know what a native species was. So mm-hmm. I tell people, I said, well, I didn't know it. I didn't consider myself a dummy. Maybe other people don't know either. So it's not just Hawaii. It's the environment around the planet, the biodiversity that we need to really think about preserving. And and do you focus on in your paintings, which are beautiful? I love your work. Um, do you focus mostly on native species in your work or just whatever captures your eye when you go for a hike. No, I'm a native species snob now. Uh, so <laughs> I will only include native species. Uh, for example, um, you know, the one I'm working on now, there are going to be, this is a picture from the Kilauea Summit looking towards Volcano House with a rainbow in the background and the light coming through. Uh, specifically, I like to see the light dark shadow contrast. 
And if I pick a view and typically what I do is take a photograph and transfer it to an iPad and paint from that versus plein air. Um, if, if there are weeds in the painting, or excuse me, if there are weeds in the photo, they're not gonna be in my painting. And if I want a bird in the painting, if it's not in the photo that I took, then it's gonna be painted in. So it gives me a lot of flexibility uh, to just have a composition that is pleasing to me and meets my pretty strict criteria. Ah, so tell us a little bit about the birds. I know that you have the one painting, you know I love the, the red bird. Can Do you have that around you or no? Oh, there this it one. is. This yes. is the yeah. Evie. And a lot of people don't realize the problems that birds are having. This was an isolated environment. Species evolved over millions of years. And then people came and introduced things that pre present challenges to the birds. Uh, this bird, if it gets bit by mosquito that's affected, infected with avian malaria or pox, will probably die. And higher elevations is where you've seen them. So I like to capture these guys to maybe get people to think, well, what can we do to help save these birds? Mm -hmm. Evie used to be in much greater numbers. They're still pretty plentiful, but you know, as it gets warmer and mosquitoes rise, it will be more of a problem. Oh, wow, this so that, does like, that go with um, climate change about the, the, the changeover with mosquitoes and things? Right, because uh, as the it, mosquitoes don't like cold weather and as the planet warms, the mosquitoes have habitat that they can survive in that are higher elevations. The Bigger populations of EEV are at the summits of this island. The island that has more problems is Kauai, lower mm. elevation. This one is Akikiki. There mm. are only seven birds left in the wild. Wow. And mostly it is because of the diseases. But, you know, it's, it's really sad what's happening. But there are a lot of people that are trying to turn it around and protect the species so future generations can enjoy them. And through your art, do you feel like you're contributing to the awareness and, and especially doing these events? I know um, with it being a little different with you doing this residency and being able to communicate with people, that gives you that opportunity to be a steward of the land and, the, and the, you know, all the flora and fauna of Hawaii. And also show, I think it's so important, like, you know, the bird is so beautiful that a lot of times people think, like gardeners think, oh, I have to have the ornamentals and the exotics, but if you look at the native plants and you start planting native plants, like you create your own, you know, national park in your backyard kind of thing, then you can start to see those ecosystems and going to a national park really proves that, right? That, right. Yeah. yeah. And it's not all bad news that, you know, we're, we're all doomed. The species are going to disappear. They've had some really good success stories with species on the brink of extinction. The Nene were down to, I think, geez, 30 or 40 birds in the world uh, in 1950 and they bred them in captivity and released them. So now they're no longer endangered, they're threatened. So, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do to help the species uh, stay healthy longer. Yeah, and we are, you know, there are programs like you're saying, the same thing as the condors. The California condors is a great example of success um, in Pinnacles National Park. And they've also started flying into Sequoia Kings Canyon National Parks and Yosemite, which is fantastic to see that you know we can make positive change you right. know and yeah without a doubt mm. and it's uh you know for the environment you try to protect the individual species and maybe think about okay how can i change my lifestyle a little bit to maybe be, be better for the planet in general i try not to buy plastic and you know that's something that affects sea life and sometimes terrestrial life life as well but we can all our, do a little part eight billion of us do a little bit can make a big impact for the planet when you think about Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, what would be one word that comes to you that defines what how your soul connects with it? Is it the biodiversity? Is it, you know, just the colors? I mean, because it seems to me that the colors are absolutely uh, insane because you can go to like the dark, dark lava to, you know, the calderas and then all of a sudden there's berries and, and birds and it looks like such a biodiverse park with multi, you know, microclimates in it. Yeah, well, there's so many things, though, whoops, excuse me, while I reach around here. Um, this is one of my favorite species. This is Ohia Lehua. It's a keystone species for our forest, and that's the habitat of the birds as well. And, and uh, it is um, a distant relative of the New Zealand Christmas tree. 
and what I think is really cool, how things came here, evolved, adapted. And this is one of the pioneer species that you'll see growing in cracks of lava, um, you know, 15 years after the eruption stops, but it'll return to those area and thrive in cracks of lava. And uh, so all of it, the way the whole system works together, that's uh, makes the unique environment that we have here. Uh, eruptions are really cool too. You've got the color in the sky, you know, you lose some species as the lava flows, but then you establish the environment where new species can regenerate those areas. So uh, there's just so many things cool about this park. And the col does color attract you as an artist? Yeah, I mean, I specifically, I, um, I always like to see the red blossoms of the ohia, but uh, I, and I gravitate towards light and shadow, you know, the contrast of that and compositions. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I keep on changing on what I think is interesting, but you know, you gotta have an open mind. There are mm -hmm. potential um, painting compositions in so many places and uh, you know, I'll never run out and I'm gonna have a lot of things to paint next month, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, cause so you're spending a full month just going in and out of the park, right? Right, right. I always go to the park anyway. You know, they, they're they not going to get rid of me, even if I'm not that's, working. That's what I thought was so amazing about you applying for this residency, because you're right there. But you're like, <laughs> no, I want to go in. And is it about the actual connecting with people that also, you know, spurred you to, to apply? Yeah, well, you know, I, I get lonely. I miss uh, being in the park. And I've always wanted to be a, a resident an artist in residence because I've seen him over the years I've worked there and it was always one of those unattainable things off there that I wish I could do and I finally sat down and applied twice the first time I didn't get it but the second time I did so I will mm -hmm. uh, get the opportunity to see the people I work with I will talk to people as they come in and uh, and hopefully I will get some nice artwork done that uh, will show that my time was well spent there in the park during this residency. With you going in there, do you have specific hikes that you know you want to go and do or specific places in the park that you want to go and capture some new images and, and so for new paintings? Yeah, I mean, the same perspective changes all the time with the, the different lights and then the clouds, the refraction of the white light uh, mm -hmm. as the sun sets because of the particulate. So you can go to the same viewpoint over and over again and get different views every time you go there. So I like the views from the northern part of the caldera. You can look through the trees into the caldera with a lot of different um, collapse features, uh, solidified lava lake with the steam, um, or going Ooh. to an eruption view, uh, eruption area that happened decades ago, seeing the life emerging from the cracks. I mean, it's just endless opportunities. I, I love this. And I love that you took the opportunity to apply and still kept going for it. I think that's something I always want artists to know that if you don't get it the first time or the second or the third, keep applying, right? Because you never know when it's oh, your yeah. turn. And, you know? and I'm, I'm still kind of in shock that I got it, but I'm also thinking that I was a good candidate uh, based on my history there and uh, my ability to paint, you know, and connect with people based on my knowledge from my uh, park ranger experience. Are you painting in acrylic or oil? Yeah, acrylic. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, I'll be 70 years old this year. So acrylic dries fast. I don't have a lot of time to wait for oil paints to dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're in a warm climate too, so it helps, right? It's just a, Yeah, but a I do, bit. I mean, the tree hugger part of me is a little, you know, oh darn, I'm painting with plastics. And every time I wash my glasses, I got microplastics into the water. But, you know, we can only do what we can do. Yeah, I think if you, we all do one thing, you know, just do as you can, because if you can't, Pyrrhus is not going to work anymore or beyond right. that. And you hopefully know? if I connect with people while I'm painting or people buy my stuff, maybe it'll inspire them to be a, maybe make changes or be a better protector of the biodiversity on this planet. Mm -hmm. Speaking of people purchasing your art, where can they purchase your art? I, I know there's a, you're in a, what gallery are you in in Hilo? Uh, right now, I have a couple of paintings in the Volcano Arts Center Gallery, right next to the Visitor's Center uh, in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And then the gallery in Hilo called the One Gallery is also where I have a lot of paintings as well. Well, thank you for changing me on saying Hilo. It's Hilo. <laughs> I'll get it. You know what? It's better when you go to places, then you start, you know, speaking the language better. But Hawaii, 
and I are, are we, we got to learn. I got a lot to learn. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I'll get there, you know, over all these interviews we do with the artists and residents in Hawaii, Nas Hawaii National Park, um, it, Volcanoes National Park. I'll get there. But I think it's always better when you're actually there to really embrace a, a new language, you know? So uh, so that is fantastic that people can go there and, and see you paint and um, connect with the parks. And then when someone purchases and it goes off into the world, you never know how many people are gonna see your work and be able to appreciate the park and the natural beauty. I yeah, love your work. I don't have any kids. So these are like, I feel like I'm adopting out a child when I sell a painting. And uh, oh. you know, I hope that the people who get my artwork uh, do uh, appreciate it and take good care of them. I think they will. I think they will. Now, I still want your one word of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. One <laughs> word that you feel. I, I'm not forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> do you have one word that you would describe it in? So, um, part, excuse me, one word here. that you would describe Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. One word. Mm. I mean, this is kind of tacky, but it would be, I guess, inspirational. Oh, no, that's not tacky. No. Uh, obviously, I mean, you're living right next to it, you know. So inspirational for art, for, yeah, that's a good word. And hope. Yeah, because I think there's something about what you were saying, you know, when you think about all the change that happens when there's an eruption and the lava moves and everything and habitats that, you know, it's like, you know, build, destroy, build, destroy, right? So rebuilding is hope, right? So right. hope and inspiration hold hands and, hand, you know, hold hands. I think that's perfect. That's a perfect and you know word. what, it's kind of weird when I walk around because I have my little camera phone, Everywhere I look, I'm always thinking, oh, that would make a nice painting. You know, I just look at things differently now because I've kind of focused my attention more on artwork uh, than I had in the mm. past. Mm. Awesome. I love it. Well, congratulations on the residency. We can't wait to hear more and how it goes and how you enjoy doing the events with people. I think they're going to love it. And I think it's really cool that you, it's like a here's your month focus of what you're doing as an artist, right? It's like this is what you get to do. So I think it's really awesome. And I know things change for artists doing this residency. They go in thinking they're going to do one thing and a whole new thing just grows out of it. So I think you're going to find new inspiration there, too. You never know. I'm going to be very flexible and open to whatever's out there. Awesome. And you're going to hug a tree, right? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Everyone, uh, stay tuned with the National Parks Arts Foundation. Follow them on Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram because they often post what is going on with the artists and residents. And we're, we're hoping to watch what goes on with Diana during her residency. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us here on Big Blend Radio's first Friday Toast to the Arts and Park show with the National Parks Arts Foundation. Learn more about their amazing park artist residency programs. Go to nationalparksartsfoundation.org. Keep up with our shows at bigblendradio.com.